What is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Fantasy Fellow Show. My name is Kyle. Uh, April 13th. Hope you guys are all doing well. It's a Saturday over here. Absolutely gorgeous day uh, in the state of Wisconsin for uh, for now. But we're going to be doing a full seven-round Packers mock draft. I'm going to be using PFF Simulator. We're going to start by looking at the Packers depth chart. I'm just going to give you guys kind of my thoughts on what positions we can maybe upgrade with a starter and positions that maybe we can, you know, look to build in some competition for starting spots. This is mock draft 7.0. So I've already done six. There's going to be a link in the description to show you guys those ones, but uh, I'm going to do this one today. And then I think I'm going to do one more leading up to the week of the draft. So it's so close, you know, we're roughly 15 days away. So I'm very excited here. Let's hop into a screen share. And I just want to let you guys know before we start the video, like I'm I'm not a draft film expert or anything like that. I do a lot. This is a fantasy football channel. So if you guys like fantasy football, uh, please subscribe. We're going to be, you know, tons of content, dynasty content, redraft content. I hope you guys out throughout the whole season. So if you like the Packers, if you like fantasy football, go ahead and subscribe. Give us a like, all that good stuff. Uh, but I do want to, uh, you know, I, I have a really good background knowledge on the quarterbacks, rookies this year for QB, running back, wide receiver, tight end. I'm really dialed in there, uh, and I'm still learning some of these defensive guys, but I do have players that I'm starting to key in on. Uh, but anyways, Packers depth chart at the top. You know, we got the receivers, Watson, Dobbs, Reed, Dontavian Wicks. I wouldn't mind some competition for the 4-5 spot here. Malik Heath and Bo Melton are nice, but you know, if we can bring in a guy on day three, maybe that's interesting there. Uh, offensive line, I think this is a spot where we're looking for in the first round here. Rashid Walker at left tackle would like to get, you know, I think I think he can hold up. You know, just looking back at the Packers' last five games, we had a 100-yard rusher in five straight games, Aaron Jones, both against, you know, and that was against the Cowboys and the 49ers uh, in the playoffs. Only two sacks on Jordan Love, and none of those were in the playoffs. So this offensive line played really strongly down the stretch here. So I don't think left tackle is our biggest need. I think it's right guard. Uh, Tom's locked into right tackle. I think Myers is fine as our center. Maybe we bring in day three competition. You know, Elton's fine at left guard. Uh, but you can kind of see we have a hole here. I think we didn't. We didn't draft a single offensive lineman last year. We're going to draft probably three, maybe even four. Like We're just going to restock that offensive line here. So I want positions all across the board for backups, and we'll see if we can uh, get a new left tackle for Rasheed Walker competition. Tight end, we're looking good. Musgrave, Tucker Craft, Tyler Davis, maybe we bring in somebody. Quarterback, you know, we're fine. Running back with Josh Jacobs there, I do want someone that compliments him. A.J. Dillon, I'm surprised he even made the team, but I, I want someone that's got some electricity, someone that can even just give us a percentage of what Aaron Jones gave. Uh, that would be nice to compliment Josh Jacobs. Uh, on defense, this is where I think we're going to be heavily – uh, investing on draft day here. We got new DC, Jeff Halfley. He's got a really good background with uh, secondary players. So I'll start there. We added Xavier McKinney, strong safety here. We do need another safety next to him. We might be doing a lot of single high safety stuff with Halfley, uh, but I do think we need a maybe a day two, if not day three safety, at least maybe one for sure, maybe two, depending on what they think. Uh, cornerback, we got Stokes, Jair Alexander, Keyshawn Nixon. You got Valentine there, Valentine. Uh, I like the group, but I, I'm not opposed to adding a strong number two competition for Stokes, a, a nice number three. I don't know if Ke uh, Keyshawn Nixon needs to be our starting nickel guy. We can maybe upgrade that. So I want a new corner uh, for sure, new safety. Linebackers, Mc McDuffie, maybe our middle linebacker here, Quay Walker, outside linebacker. We need another linebacker. So that's one starting spot for sure. So we've identified right guard and uh, a second safety and a potentially middle or outside linebacker. So those are the three spots that I'm looking at in this draft. And then defensive line, you know, we got edge rushers, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Van S. And then Barre was playing nice, but he got hurt. I wouldn't mind a number three, number four competition. And you know, we're not proven anything with with Gary and Vanessa like we're not given anything with those guys they're good players uh but I wouldn't mind uh maybe another edge rusher up high and Kenny Clark and Devontae Wyatt in the middle we got Carl Brooks and TJ Slayton there I like I like the depth of the nose tackle and the defensive tackle spots but not opposed to grabbing a guy there too so there we go we talked too much about the depth chart let's just get into the draft here and uh let's have fun I'm gonna hit start and we'll see what happens all right we just missed Cooper DeGene Tyler Guyton Demarius Mims Byron Murphy, Nate Wiggins, Jared Verse. So we missed a, a few guys that are going to be high on the Packers list. I mean, if this is the way the draft goes, I, I mean, I think it's pretty clear to me that Liatu Latu is going to be the pick here. The edge rusher out of UCLA, I, I kind of have him as a top 15 pick. Dominant the last two seasons. He's got 27 sacks in the last two years. Tons of QB hurries, tons of hits. And this, I mean, this is just a mock draft. It's all made up and nothing really matters. But if there's any chance that we can get uh, Latu here, I mean, he's going to come in and, and be a starting guy for us. He's going to come in and compete with Rashawn Gary, 
Van Ness, Preston Smith. May not be the position of need, but to me, he's the clear top player available. And if this is the way the mock draft's going to shake out, I'm going to go Latu here. Uh, other players that I don't mind here, I do like Kool-Aid McKinstry. Again, adding a guy that can be our number two, number three cornerback. And we're not really given anything with Jair and, and Stokes. They've been kind of in and out of the lineup a lot. So I think maybe a cornerback makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm not into Tyler Newbin, Peyton Wilson at the end of round one. We could easily trade out here. I'm not opposed to doing that. But, hey, the board falls and we get Latu here, the edge rusher. Count me in. Um, there were some other players there that, uh, I mean, I, I do like Darius Robinson quite a bit. I like Chop Robinson a lot too, if you guys uh, are familiar with their game. So it's looking really strongly that the edge rusher position might be really strong there. I'm not a big fan of the left tackles at where the Packers are going because we're going to be drafting, what, the seventh, eighth, ninth best you know, tackle at that point of the draft here. So I think looking later makes a little bit of sense to me. So uh, either way, round two, we're on the clock here with pick 41. There's Newbin, Pete Wilson, Zach Frazier's falling, Bo Nix, TJ Tampa, Mike Sainer still, maybe our starting uh, slot cornerback here. Braden Fisk on the defensive line. A lot of good players here available. Javon Bullard, the safety, Adisa Isaac. Uh, this is a fun little spot here. Uh, I just want to make sure I'm looking at the linebackers properly here. You've got Edrin Cooper, who might be there for us later. Peyton Wilson. I've been liking Peyton Wilson, but I know he's injury prone. Uh, I, I'm not sure if his medicals are going to clear, but he did post a really nice RAS score. So he's definitely interesting here. I think Peyton Wilson, and I know his injury concerns are, are they're, they're, you know, they're there. Um, but if he clears the medicals and the Packers think he's good to go, I think this is a player they are for sure looking at here. So he, you know, if healthy, he can be a starting inside linebacker on any defense. So really strong player here. If we wanted to go corner though, TJ Tampa, Mike Sane were still, I think these guys are, are very interesting. I just, I don't know if, you know, if, if we're going to be picking back here, if, if our guy, Edrin Cooper's going to make it to us. I, I can't be promised that. I really like Edrin Cooper, though. He really only had one good year, and that was 2023. I'd like to see more from him, but super fast player, really good defensively. Um, he has the length and the athleticism to be a starting caliber linebacker in the NFL in the downhill role. His lack of anticipation and instincts for deeper coverage work will likely keep him from being a, uh, picked in the first round. So interesting. Um, but if this is the way the draft board's going to fall, I think I'm just going to take Peyton Wilson. I mean, I like Braden Fisk. I like Sainer still a lot. Like Sainer still is a really fun player. If we wanted a starting slot, like this is our guy. Uh, Two-year starter at Michigan. Gave up some touchdowns last year, but he had six interceptions. Passer rating was pretty good. And you can see he's predominantly a slot cornerback. So elite coverage grade here. Better in zone, though. I'm not sure why. Uh, run defense grades fine, a little bit below average. Completion percentage is fine. So Sainer still definitely a guy that I think uh, is on the list that could be a starter for us. But I'm going to grab Peyton Wilson here, starting linebacker, potentially for the Packers. And uh, again, I know the medical concerns are there, but if, if he checks out, he's an elite RAS talent. Packers like that. Uh, and pick 58, we're on the board here. Did we miss out on Edger and Cooper? I wasn't sure if Cooper was going to fall. And Cooper did make it. So can see him down here. So round two, pick 58. The Packers have a lot to look at here. You know, there's a lot of edge rushers in this area. Keon Coleman, Jonathan Brooks is really exciting. Kieran Amegdege, a potential left tackle for the Packers out of Yale. Only played four games last year, but pretty solid uh, run blocking units here. Uh, I'm open to it. <clears throat> Starting left tackle could be uh, an interest. Marshawn Nealon's a sleeper here out of Western Michigan. He's been rising up draft boards, I see. He's a really fun edge rusher. Uh, otherwise, Chris Jenkins. I, I think Jaden Hicks might be the best safety in this draft class. I know his 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 numbers aren't going to pop out here on PFF, but if you just go watch a highlight tape or watch some of his game tape, he's a really fun prospect, and he can slot in as our second uh, safety next to Xavier McKinney. So he is a well-built, strong safety who can play at all three levels of the field. He is a tone-setting tackler and has starting potential in two safety systems, especially as a strong robber or strong safety robber over the middle. So if we want a safety here, I think Jaden Hicks is going to be my pick. Um, if we wanted a right guard. Christian Haynes, I think, makes a lot of sense. He's a three-year starter out of UConn. Really strong grades. Again, three straight years starting at right guard here. This could be our plug-and-play starting right guard for the Packers. Really strong on pretty much every metric that you look at here. Haynes showed in his tape and at the Senior Bowl that he is a starting potential measurables and traits at guard in the NFL. His best work comes on the move, which would bode well for zone blocking scheme and as a puller for a man-gap scheme. So 
Christian Haynes checks all the boxes for me, but I'm going to wait a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab Jaden Hicks here. I haven't mocked him in some of my, my mocks, and I'm just trying to do different things right now uh, at this point in the process. So there we go. We have a starting edge rusher, uh, or at least in the fold here with Rashawn Gary and Vanessa and Smith. Uh, we got Latu out of UCLA. Round two, we get a starting linebacker. And I don't know how they're going to shake up Quay, McDuffie, and now Peyton Wilson, but they'll figure it out. And in pick 58, we get a safety that can come in and maybe play some um, some other positions and get some roles defined for him. So uh, we're up to pick here, <clears throat> round three, pick 88. And the reason I kind of hesitated on Christian Haynes is because I really like Jeff Halfley's old pal, Christian Mahogany here. Now, he's a right guard. Uh, last year, he started 12, pretty much 12 games at right guard. He did play right guard in 2021. I can't remember what happened in 2022, but zero sacks given up last year. He is a really strong pass blocker. Zone and gap grade are both looking pretty good here. I think round three, this looks like a good value. Uh, Mahogany is a guard only and a powerful run blocker with inconsistencies in the passing game. He projects, he projects into a rotational and potential starting role for a team that is heavier in the run game in the mostly man gap concept. So they're saying not so much zone, but uh, I, I think this is a guy that probably every single Boston college player is probably getting looked at here uh, by the Packers pretty heavily. So I'm going to lock in Mahogany and we'll make this next pick based on who's available. Back on the board here, uh, I'm looking at, you know, potential left tackle, another safety. I really like the cornerbacks in this range here, too. Um, Cam Kinchins, man, he was a second-round pick not too long ago. Renardo Green interests me a little bit, a, a two-year starter here. He's more of an outside corner. Uh, I really like Jerrion Jones out of Florida State. This is uh, another slot cornerback. You can see his first two years, he wasn't so good uh, in the PFF grade, but last year, they just let him sit in the slot for pretty much all the season, and he puts up his best grade. Zero touchdowns allowed, three interceptions, 25.3 passing grade or passer rating against him. I think Jerry and Jones can come in and, and be a, a nice secondary piece on this team. So I'm going to grab uh, Jerry and Jones out of Florida State unless I can find – you know, there's a couple other players in this range that I think make a lot of sense. I don't know if we're looking for running back quite yet. I really wanted to get Jalen Wright, but where did he end up going? He went pick 77. So maybe the Packers are moving around and we find a way to get Jalen Wright on the squad. That would excite me quite a bit. Uh, but I think I'm going to stick with my thought here. Jerry and Jones, potential starting slot corner uh, out of FSU. And we're moving into the fourth round now, uh, pick 126. And there's going to be a lot of guys that I like here. I do like Cooper Beebe, the left guard out of Kansas State. And maybe he can, <clears throat> you know, we, we we talked about the Packers not taking a single offensive lineman in the draft last year. Our cupboard is bare. We need a, you know, we need bodies at these positions. And even if we already took Christian Mahogany, I'm not opposed to taking Cooper Beebe here. Uh, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of offensive linemen that I like coming up at, at tackle. You know, Ladarius Henderson out of Michigan didn't have the best grade last year, but he's definitely a, a good piece on a, on a good Michigan team. Uh, we don't have a left tackle yet, but there's going to be some guys here, whether it's Christian Jones, a three-year starter out of Texas. He was a right tackle for those two years. Left tackle, he didn't really play well there uh, as at, at Texas. But um, Satua Lamia, uh, not great grades here. Let's see, other tackles. Maybe the, the Illinois tackle, maybe not here. I'm kind of striking out on tackles. I was more so thinking about the interior offensive lineman, and this is where it gets really good. So I really like Cooper Beebe, love him a lot. I think Zach Ginter, another potential right guard option for us. Three-year starter at Michigan, zero sacks allowed last year. He had his best year last year. He's definitely somebody I want at pick 155 ADP. Maybe we can get him in the fourth or fifth. And then I really like Drake Nugent too, the center. He could come in and give Corey Lindsley uh, not Corey Lindsley, my God, Josh Myers. Uh, he can give Josh Myers a chance uh, at some competition here. So I like both Michigan offensive linemen late. You know, we can maybe look at a, a guy like Javon Foster, a left tackle here that looks pretty strong out of Missouri, uh, ADP of 160. But just loading up the trenches, I think, makes a lot of sense. I'm not opposed to wide receiver here, too. I like Malik Washington a lot, but the Packers already kind of have a Jaden Reed type with him. Mo Kamara out of Colorado State has been a popular pick for me. We're not, I do not want Braylon Allen on this team. I'm sorry, Badger fans, but he's too much like uh, A.J. Dillon, I think. Uh, so we're going to get a grab Cooper BB Again, we're just plugging in offensive line. We got a good base on defense. We're hitting all the levels there. And let's see what we can find here. Joe Milton, Dylan Lobb. There's Drake Nugent and Javon Foster here. So I talked both of these guys up quite a bit. Um, 
and I'm liking I'm liking this uh, opportunity here. So uh, Dylan Lobb, <clears throat> an elite, elite, elite receiving back. This could be the guy that comes in uh, and compliments Josh Jacobs. Be a third down kind of receiving back here. Think of like a Giovanni Bernard type. That's kind of what he can do. But I think the value right here, you know, if you want the backup center, take Drake Nugent. We can train him at center and left and right guard. But this is actually a sneaky one here. Javon Foster, this Missouri offensive tackle, three-year starter at Missouri. Elite grade. I, I, I don't know why he's being overlooked here. Six foot five, three, 319 analysis here. There's nothing on him. And you can see 10% of the people are taken by the Packers. Uh, I'm going to lock in Javon, uh, Javon Foster here and see if he can compete with Rasheed Walker to be our left tackle. So, boom, we got two guards and a tackle. That's looking pretty strong for our offensive line uh, rebuild here. Some running backs available maybe this late as we're entering the sixth round. I like Tanner Bordellini maybe as a center or guard prospect as well. Uh, but let's just take a peek here. Tip Ryman, really good run blocking tight end. Not really a, a great receiver, but he's kind of a, a good special teams tight end. Hunter Nurzad out of Penn State. He played center. He played left guard. He played right tackle. He played left tackle. They put him all over the spot. He's, he's a Big Ten offensive lineman. He could be another lineman option for us. Um, Frank Gore Jr. is interesting. He's not going to blow you away with anything here. He played at Southern Miss, so it's a small school. I get it. Uh, and he's he's been a solid receiving back as well. But elite rushing grade, zone grade, gap grade, elusive rating is looking pretty good. I know it's a small school, but, hey, Frank Gore Jr. could kind of come in and, and – and, I, I just don't think A.J. Dillon's very good, guys. I kind of want to get someone uh, over A.J. Dillon. Uh, I do have some running backs that I like deep yet, so we'll we'll kind of pass on running back here. I do want to just double check Tyron Hopper out of out of Missouri. Interesting guy here. He had a terrible year last year, but a great 2022. He can kind of come in and maybe be someone that <clears throat> you know backs up our guys at the linebacker spot. <clears throat> I really like this Joshua Cephas. Now he had some he had a DUI, I think in the 2022 season. <clears throat> but you're looking at the all-time leading receiver at UTUS, UTSA for, I believe it's receptions, touchdowns, and maybe games played. You know, elite numbers here. Last year, you put up 89 catches, 1,150 yards, and 10 TDs. This could be an option for us deep uh, in, in the day three, maybe a fourth or fifth type receiver. <clears throat> I'm going to take it. I'm going to take – I'm going to do it because <clears throat> in a lot of my mocks, I haven't been taking a receiver, but I think we got to take at least – pull one. This is a great receiver class. So I think you got to pull one. We're back up to pick here uh, in the end of the sixth round. Borderlini's at the top. I, I kind of like Isaiah Davis here. This is a guy that, again, small school, South Dakota State, but 1,500 yards rushing last year, 14 the year before. He's getting better as a receiving back here. And you can just see he's an elite elite talent. He dominated at this level. He could be a guy that comes in and backs, us, uh, backs up Josh Jacobs. So I'm going to grab Isaiah Davis. <clears throat> RB two, three for us in round seven. We're just going to kind of fill in the gaps here. Let's just look at Curtis Jacobs here out of Penn state. Looks like a three-year starter, really poor run defense grade. Okay. And in, in coverage, decent pass rush grade. Maybe he's a special teams linebacker. Uh, otherwise, Akari Franklin, Tanner McLaughlin. I like Rasheen Ali too. Just a lot of guys here. Layden Robinson, left guard or right guard, potentially from Texas A&M. We're kind of just swinging and missing here. So I think I, this is a guy that I've taken quite a bit in a lot of my mocks, Jordan McGee, uh, basically a three-year starter out of Temple. He's a box safety, looking pretty good as a pass rusher. Run defense is stout. Coverage grade is good. Maybe his measurables aren't desirable, but six foot three, 225. I kind of like him. He's a he's a, a late day three pick. He can come in and play some special teams. We'll grab Jordan McGee here. Um, and I think this is our last pick of the draft. So let's see if we can have some fun here. Um, another edge rusher. Maybe we get a big old defensive lineman. I actually really like this Blake Walston. He is a really good receiving back. 53 catches last year, 483 yards. Uh, I don't want to draft a second running back since we have Dylan and Jacobs already on the roster. But uh, if we wanted to grab someone, I'm open to this because he's, he's free at the end of the draft and he can come in and maybe earn some third down work, you know. Uh, otherwise. Jared Wiley's a good sleeper tight end. He's been a productive guy for the last couple of seasons at TCU. Let's just kind of go with, uh, let's look at the cen center here. Pretty shitty grades. Oh, no. Um, Carson Barnhunt, a left tackle, right tackle from Michigan. Not looking good there. Easton Gibbs, linebacker out of Wyoming. Productive guy here. 
Um, a box, a box linebacker, a lot of snaps. Do I want to grab a third linebacker that would give us five total on the roster? I don't know. I like Lediatric Griffin late, JC Davis, another tackle. What about Gabe Hall here? Defensive lineman out of Baylor. He's a B gap kind of player. He's just okay, but he's a kind of a three year player. Not a lot of sacks. Interesting. I kind of want one DL. Jaden Crumity. Let's just do it. We're going to grab one big boy on the defensive line. 6'5", 305. Welcome to the squad, Jaden Crumity. So there you go. Packers mock draft in the books. Let's see how we grade it out here. And again, this we're just having fun. I'm not really trying too much. Um, just trying to get new names, new faces. Look at that. We had an A-plus with Leatu Latu out of UCLA. He's And I know we have an edge rusher with Rashawn Gary, Lucas Vanessa, and Preston Smith. But we're not guaranteed to have Preston Smith next year. And I think in this modern NFL, you need at least three or four pass rushers because one of them is going to get hurt for some time, and you need to be able to, to bring in a, a race package on third down. You need edge rushers. And anytime that Gutenkus can take one of Latu's caliber, I think he's going to do it. The PFF gives us an A for Peyton Wilson. Give me a B on Jaden Hicks, but I'm fine with that. He's going to be a role player for the Packers. So uh, Latu is a, is, a, is a rotational starter. Wilson is a starter. Jaden Hicks is a Hicks is a rotational starter. Mahogany could come in and compete for that right guard spot. I like that spot. I think Jaron Jones can come in and compete for that uh, starting nickel corner. Cooper Beebe could be a guy that comes in and, and wins that right guard spot as well. And then Javon Foster, we could get a starting left tackle out of this. We could get a you know a wide receiver five six out of Cephas. Isaiah Davis could be our RB two. Jordan McGee, you know, rotational linebacker, special teams. And then Jaden Crumity, we'll see what he's got, uh, you know, for special teams and maybe some defensive line work. But overall, A minus. Top 40% of the Packers drafts. All right. <clears throat> this was kind of fun. So I, I think it's a good group. Um, you know, we don't have, we honestly don't have many glaring needs, guys. You know, right guard, left tackle up improvements. We, we could use a RB2 on offense. We could use, a starting linebacker on defense and, and some secondary help. But overall, I think the Packers are in a position to just add a bunch of good talent this year, five top hundred picks. It's going to be a fun draft. So again, I'll do one more of these uh, the week leading up to the draft. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Mm -hmm.